to T to T Wrestling. My name is Toya Nice. And from the week I've been having, I'm having a very bad week. And I always like to put it on other people. So that's why I'm letting Tim back on. <laughs> Hi, Tim. <laughs> yes, I am. Uh, hi, to hi, Toya. Hi. Thank you for uh, thank thank you for getting ready to abuse me again. Hey, That's no just what I need in life. I know. Absolutely, <laughs> just what I've been waiting for. I know other people won't. <laughs> I will still take my revenge. Anyway, wrestling. Sure. Anyways, let me hear. Sure. Oh, we're here for the wrestling. backlash. <laughs> WrestleMania Backlash 2022. I actually like, I think we said it last year as well, I like that they have turned it into, like, Backlash for WrestleMania. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, that's obviously what it is. <laughs> but I know that, and it's always been that, but I like that they've made it, I like that they have made it, um... Official? Yeah, it's explicit. I just wish they also went ahead with it in, in, a, lot, in a lot of the cases. The main event should, in my opinion, have been a follow-up to Mania, rather than whatever it was, but we'll get to that. But everything else was clearly like follow-up to Mania, and I really like that. It makes more sense that you, instead of, in the old days, most storylines ended at Mania. These days, not always so much. So I like the fact that they're making one that is deliberately about following up, so to speak, if, if that's how they do it. Anyhow, you want to talk about the first match? No, sure, why not? Um, first match, we got Seth freaking Rollins versus Cody Rhodes. Good Yo. start. Good, yeah, good, good start. Yeah, amazing start. Amazing start. I mean, you know what? I have, else, to, I have to say that I actually enjoyed this match more than the rest of Mania 1. Yes, I have comments about this. I actually thought, first of all, I thought uh, this was match of the evening. Um, I don't think we had a better match this evening, in general. Um, and we had some good matches this evening. Um, but yeah, no, this was definitely better than Mania. We said after Mania that we thought these two would get better with a bunch of, you know, uh, house matches or something. And I don't know if they've had them, but they were definitely, they have definitely improved. Mm -hmm. All the little... All the little issues we talked about. Yeah, all about the little kinks that it, they had before. It seemed like it, yeah, it, was it seemed like worked smoothed out, out entirely. This was just oh man, this was just, this was like I don't know if they're playing into the whole dusty uh, thing. Um, Cody's dad, of course, but this was like an old school retro start to the match. It was like the first two or three, four minutes was just. You know, very slow, very methodical, like reverse on reverse on reverse on reverse. It felt like watching something back in the early 90s, late 80s, which is a positive thing, by the way. I am very happy about that sometimes. He approves. I do. Do you approve, Taya? I approve. I, I, like, yeah, I, like I said, it was like way better, way more smoother. Absolutely. Way more like also, just... All the things that I was like, I like I said, I like I said, we, like we said before, you know, they just need a couple of times just to work together, and it seemed like I don't know if they're working together behind the scenes or during house shows or whatever, like you said, but it yeah. seemed like it was so much better. Yeah, so much, so much, and whatever else, I'm pretty sure that Seth is having a crap ton of fun picking out his uh, entrance gear these days. Those poor muppets. I don't even know how he could go even more overboard than he did at Mania, but he somehow managed to make it work. Oh, oh man. Anyway, so... <sighs> Any highlights? I really like... Uh, it was just uh, one thing I had was that um, run where Cody like runs halfway around on the ring and then straight into a 180 clothesline mm -hmm. um just flips 180 on the ground outside the ring that that looked pretty cool yeah. um i i really love the pace i mean this was one of those things there wasn't really i mean seth more mostly dominated because he's the heel he kind of has to but 
I really like that this wasn't one of those where it's like, this guy has 10 minutes of complete domination, then the other guy has 10 minutes of complete domination. There was constant reversals. Like, no one got in more than two or three, maybe four really big hits before the other one had a comeback. And I really like that because I feel like it, it, it keeps the pace up of the match, and it also makes it more... If you look at it from a non from a kayfabe perspective, which I try to do when I watch matches because I want to try to enjoy them, right? It makes it seem more logical that someone can kick out of a finisher if the other person hadn't spent fifteen minutes brutalizing them before hitting it. So I was just I don't hmm I don't really know if I have any sort of real highlights on this. I don't I don't think there was any. I mean, there wasn't one I mean, that have... for me that was just spectacular. I was like, oh, I no, thought it, it was, was a good, a... good pace yeah, exactly. match. A good start. Like, a good, good start to a match. To the event, anyway. This is how a wrestling match... This is proof that a wrestling match can be awesome without having, like, a ton of high spots. Yeah, exactly. Again, there was the there was the clothesline where Rhodes did a one eighty around himself, which is always, I mean, super cool to see. Um, it's apparently fairly easy to do if you yeah I do it all the time know, are, are athletic and knows what you're doing. I do it all the time. Really, doing it yeah, right now, exactly. guys. You, don't, you can't see me. Yeah. I'm doing it right now. <laughs> yeah, so spinning around like a pinwheel or something. Um, but yeah, no, this was just a this was just a really really awesome match of showing how a match can be fantastic without the high spots, and those two are really good. And we are obviously going to see Seth versus Cody three, based oh. on what happened at Raw. So good, fine, whatever. I looking forward it. to the, looking forward to that one. Oh yeah, by the uh, way, Cody won, guys. <laughs> oh, Cody won, absolutely, as we as we had predicted, and as he should. Yeah. Um, I am saying again that if they want to keep this feud going once more, then Seth has to win the next. But I also think they want to keep this somewhat short because I think they need to move Cody up in the world, so to yeah, speak. Yeah, I need to win some belts. Yeah, so I, I would not be surprised if the next match was like a cage match or a Hell in a Cell or it's something that's so like we can end it now. And move 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 uh, both of them on to other things, but really great starter match. I was hyped. I mean, I liked the, I liked the card. I really liked the card going into this, but I was hyped after this match. Can we move on? Yes, we can. Oh, okay, good. Jesus. Then I wasn't so hyped anymore. <laughs> All right. Well, next match we got Omos with MVP versus Bobby Lashley. Play. Yep. This was. I don't even remember this match. This, this was a weird one to me, because it started out. It started out, in my opinion, rather badly, because it started out being one of those things where almost just brutalized Black, me all the way through. Like for the first couple of minutes, it was just power slap, power move, power move, power move, power move, power move, more power move, and Lashley's just being thrown around like a ragdoll, and I'm like. Don't don't turn this into a squash, guys. But they didn't. Uh, Lashley got his back. He had some stuff, and this was both longer and more double sided. I mean, it was not entirely one side. This was actually a match. This is the first actual wrestling match I've seen Omos have. Yeah. He got taken down several times. He oh. even tried to do wrestling moves. Yeah. I mean, oh, maybe MVP improving his skills or something. Yeah. Mm, Absolutely. Maybe it was hardly. Hardly a five-star match. I also still think it was the worst match of the evening from a, like, match perspective, but a hell of a lot better than I had expected. He's, and not he's, a bad he's, match. He's improving every time. Yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, I just give him, give, him, give him a couple more. Yeah. I'm sure he'll be up there. I'm sure he will be nearly as good as Braun Strowman was when they, for some reason, fired and, him. And then they'll fire him. And then they'll fire him, yes, basically. But no, this was this was fine. This was I mean, if you have to have a P match of the evening, it's clearly this one, but there's no, no need. It was a perfectly serviceable power match. Yeah. 
I think it's actually pretty good. I, from what I remember. Yeah. yeah, I really like, like you said, it's like the beginning is like dominating. Because, you know, as I said, he's a heel, so obviously, um, Omos is going to dominate. Yeah. But, like, you know, you know, it wasn't just like, like, Omos going against like Kofi Kingston or something. He, I mean, no, Bobby Lashley it was, also- was actually got some licks in and stuff like that. Yeah, and it was also pretty long, 12 minutes. I yeah, think. that's what I was surprised about. I was like, wow. Like, yeah. I was yeah, like, I thought the really, chance would be have about really that longness long. because that was pretty long. I was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is, uh, yeah, this was just, this was like a perfectly serviceable match. Two, two and a half stars, nothing special, but considering what we expected, good on you guys. Well done. Uh, almost one, by the way, as he. As as he should, I, of course. I think he got to. I think Bobby Lashley got distracted by MVP or something. I don't know. Yes. To pay attention. Yes. Uh, literally had um almost tied up in the ropes at one point. Yeah. He was like holy shit! He like brutal. He like really. You know. Once after you're tied him. up in the ropes, you you can't get out. You're completely um you're completely defenseless. So Lashley beat on almost for a while, but then. MVP distracted him. Lashley went after MVP. He almost got himself out, and uh, uh, you know, put Lashley down. It was fine. It was absolutely serviceable for what it did. We are also going to have almost Lashley three at what is it next time? Is it? Uh, is it? I don't is remember. It, no, is it? I, it's I apologize. Not money in the, the bank people. already, is it? Huh? What? It's not money in the bank already. Next time, is it? Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know either. We will find out. Anyway, we're going to see. We're going to see this. uh, Well, we're gonna have to do one more because obviously we're gonna have to do one more because we're gonna have to go. For an MVP, so. Yeah, yeah. No, no. There's no doubt we're going to see one more. But like I said, I'm. Might might see might see a couple of them actually. Next one is Hell in a Cell. That makes (laughs) perfect sense. (laughs) That, would make that sense. actually makes perfect sense both for Cody and Seth and uh, these two. Yeah. Um. Absolutely. Anyway, yeah. No. Pretty good. Next match. Next match. We got Edge versus AJ Styles. I'm gonna attempt take this one because I didn't watch this one. <laughs> oh, this was a supremely not all of it anyway. Just, no, this was just a really good match. These two work really well together. They they. I, I mean, we always said Edge versus AJ was a was a um, dream match. Dream match. I'm just sad that we. I mean, the problem is the way they are building it up with what is it they call it Judgment Day. Is that what they call Edge's um, Edge's uh, Judgment Day or yeah. whatever. The problem is because we are building up that thing. Still, we haven't yet actually gotten like a clean finish to any of these matches, which I think we should have before the end. But, um, no, the, just the match are absolutely fine. This is one of those where I'm like, sometimes I complain about slow pace, but in this one it was perfect because it just matched the story's internal storytelling. Both these two are supremely good wrestlers from a technical and storytelling perspective. So, like I said, if, if Omar's and Lashley was how to do a power move match in a watchable way, this was exactly the same from a technical power move match, so to speak. Um, just two supremely good wrestlers going at it, telling a story in the match with one gets injured, then the other gets injured, blah, 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 blah. And, yeah, there's not there's not really much to talk about more than that. It was just a supremely good match. Go watch it. The only thing that prevents it from being the best match of the evening, in my opinion, is that we had another, um, which, which we, we knew we kind of would, but we had another uh, shenanigans ending where, um, what's his name, Damian Priest came out and distracted AJ, and then uh, Baylor came out and attacked a Priest, and then a hooded figure came out and attacked and distracted AJ, and Edge picked up the win, and it turned out that the third and n- probably second to last member of Judgment Day was Rhea Ripley, which was a surprise to me, but not an unwelcome one. Yeah, that's that part I saw, and I just saw, like, the that person going through the ring, and, yeah. like, bending down, I'm like, who is this person? 
<laughs> what's going on? I'm like, what the hell is happening? I'm like, what did I miss? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I mean, it was just a, it was, it was just a really, really good match. The match itself until the ending was perfect. And I, I'm, I'm saying that I'm wrong. This match needed to end in shenanigans because that's that's the feud. I mean, yeah. they're, they're, at the this feud. point, it seems they also based on what happened on Raw, where there was another like feud and confrontation. It's pretty clear that Hell in a Cell, we're probably going to have a six man match here with, you know. Judgment Day versus Baylor and AJ and Liv Morgan, I guess. Um, oh, there's a there's a stable. <laughs> yeah, they are not really a, they're not a stable. They're just opposing the other stable. And Edge is probably going to bring out his last member of the team. Then whatever that last member is going to be, and win again with shenanigans. That that doesn't matter. That's how it's supposed to be. Um, but uh, yeah, no, this was this was this was really good. Like I said, I I hadn't expected the third person in that stable to be Rhea, but looking at it, you're like, sexist? knowing that it was, a lot of it actually makes really good sense, I feel. Yeah, I mean, now that I see it, when I first saw it, I was just like, okay, I, I didn't hate the idea, but I was okay. kind of like confused, but like after a while, like after Raw, I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, it re re really does, and they also didn't really have anything else for her. True. That was obvious. So uh, no, this is uh, this is this is really positive. I really like it. Yeah. Good on them. Yeah, I'm just waiting um, to see if that's just it, or there's gonna be more, and what they're gonna do, and everything else. I'm, I'm yeah. kind of interested in what Judgment Day is going to do, and who else are they gonna attack? Yeah, I mean that that's the only problem I have with it right now. I mean I don't have a problem with it at all. But that's that's the that's the worry I have that it's one thing to build it's one thing to build a stable like that, but what is your plan with it? Yeah, exactly. Like, okay, great. I mean, back, <laughs> back in the last really big successful stable in WWE is probably oh man, that's twenty years ago. That's probably still evolution. Like really successful dominant stable. We've had teams and we have smaller groupings, but uh, in in the main roster, undisputed era was some was completely dominating on um, and popular on NXT, of course. Yeah. But if, if you take Evolution, it was very clear what Evolution was supposed to do. It was supposed to continue Triple H as the dominant heel champion while building up uh, Batista and Edge. Uh, sorry, sorry, no, Batista and Orton giving Ric Flair one last run and putting his and uh, putting his star power over all of it. There was a very clear that me. Um, yeah, no, there was a very clear. This is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to do it. And I'm just a. We've seen a lot of other like sort of groupings form up since then, and a lot of them has gone down. Like Sanity, for instance, a lot of them has gone down because it's been quite clear that it was like, okay, we put them together, now what do we do with them? So yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I'm, I'm mostly just looking forward to seeing and hoping that, these, that they have a plan with this and not just putting them together because it's like, well, that sounds decent. True. Alright, well, it's one we're moving on. Yo! Next match, we got the women's SmackDown match versus Charlotte Flair versus Ronda Rousey and I Quit match. Yeah. Submission I Quit match, I guess. This was the best match these two have ever had. Agreed. And just as I said at Mania, this might be the best match I've ever seen Ronda in. Yeah, I agree. Again, oh, that's yeah, a very good match. Not, yeah, it was an amazingly good start. Both of them played into their characters. Um, both of them got to show off their chops. So just Charlotte running away up the ramp was like, this is this is Rick in the old days, right? The complete cowardly heel. And then, of course, it's Charlotte, so she turned the table with kendo sticks. And then it was just, I mean, no hold bars, I guess, because it's an I quit match. So it was just, yeah, not... not at one point, there was a chant of "We want tables." Yeah, which was weird. Sort of okay. Is that what you? I mean, I get it, but that actually reminded me. When has we last seen a really good tables match? When have we actually seen a tables match 
in WWE last time. Um, on ages. SmackDown. Uh, there might be one on SmackDown. This no, probably. there was one on SmackDown. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm just saying, I, I can't remember the last time we've seen a really honest-to-God uh, uh, table match, but I can believe there was one on SmackDown. That's yeah, possible. Between uh, uh, you know, like last Friday, uh, yeah, between um, oh, okay. New Day and um, whatever it fucking stable Seamus is in. Oh, yeah, that, that, that one. They call it, like, the Friday Night Fight Club or something. Something like something. that, yeah. They, I had, can't they had a table yeah. match. Oh, awesome. Um, I'm sure that'll be good. I haven't kept ca caught up on uh, the weekly shows for a little while now. Um, so that's sad, because maybe I should go watch that then. Anyway, yeah, like I said, just really honest to good, honest to God good match. Both of them playing up their strength and honestly beating the shit out of each other. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, this is one of those... Anyone say a woman can't do a hardcore match, no one ever says that a woman can't do a hardcore match. But, I mean, if anyone says women can't do hardcore matches or, you know, uh, at least no uh, no hold bars matches, just show them this one. Because they really worked. Um, it wasn't ECW style with, you know, thumbtacks and both of them bleeding like they were supposed to bleed out and die before the end of the match. But, you know, it was just, 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 just a really good beat the shit out of each other match until uh, until the end. To the um, arm bar in the one, chair. One. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, the chair. Um, I also that, really love that uh, Charlotte just got in the uh, references to Mother's Day. Because, uh, you know, oh, Rhonda like, was away because she 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 uh, became a mummy. Yeah, she had a child. So. Yeah. It was Mother's Day on Backlash. On Sunday, yeah. Um, so. so Charlotte was being nice. She set up a yeah. chair, told, you know, Rhonda Rousey, happy Mother's Day. And then, you know, Rhonda and then being a little, Ron, Rhonda being a little bitch, then didn't, didn't want to say thank you or anything, just pulled her arm in the yeah. chair and, like, yeah. give her arm bar in the chair. Poor Charlotte. She was just trying to be nice and happy Mother's Day. <laughs> yeah, Charlotte is just such a, such a nice and sweet person. And Rhonda is just such a... Just a evil, horrible evil person. Evil, evil mean mean meanie head and you know made her tap out to the disarmor not the disarmor oh sorry it's not, not the, the disarmor disarm sorry that's that's <laughs> becky um well it's nearly the same thing to be completely honest um no, no it's not <laughs> <laughs> no no it's not no it really isn't but yeah ronda ronda got charlotte to tap out charlotte was left crying in the ring, I guess. This was the only is, women's uh, match in the whole show. Yeah, but another thing, by the way, that... Again, it was a fairly short um, card, six matches, but at the same time, that also meant that all of them got time to develop and actually be good. Um, so far in the card, I was I was super, super psyched for this. Like, I was... It was, that wasn't a bad match yet, and I was... Everything went. I mean, the so far for me, when the way it would. so far for me, in at that night, it seemed everything seemed to go pretty well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Even with was, the, even with the Omos and Valerie Lashley, like, there was not like bad. And exactly. I still need to I go was, watch the other Edge and um, match. I but, was. Yeah. yeah, you do. It's worth it's worth you watching. It's a really good. Like I've seen like bits and um, pieces of here and there, but yeah, I need to yeah. actually watch the no, entire. No, I, I, I was I was like, this is this is going super well. This is an <laughs> early is... contender for you know it's... best pay per view of the year, maybe. Um, it was just it was just really good. Yeah, well, round one because um, it was Mother's Day. Yay! Yeah, yay! Yes, <laughs> you I guess. Charlotte is now injured, whether or not that's kayfabe or real life, I don't know, but I, I mean, she's been championed for... A while. Uh, almost a year now. First on SmackDown, then on Raw. We don't need her to be around. Roman Reigns. She needs to go. Yeah, I, 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 as far as I know, she's taking some time off now, mm -hmm. um, which, which which then makes sense. That's fine. That's not, not a problem. All right, um, well, good match. next match, we got Happy Corbin versus Mad Cat Moss. Yeah. This I was really not a uh, WrestleMania backlash. They didn't fight at WrestleMania. No. But no, but they had to split up at the, WrestleMania. Yeah. 
Or at least at the roll after. I can't even remember. I don't know what WrestleMania the uh, roll after, but they yeah. they broke up. They they broke up in 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 sort of um, <laughs> near to WrestleMania. So sort of yeah. Right in between. I, I, I really find it sad that the audience have never really taken to Corbin. I think he's super under uh, uh, underrated. Yeah, I think he's underestimated, underrated, definitely. I don't yeah. know why. No, I don't know why either. It's like back in the day when he was Lone Wolf, I was like, that that's a future main event star, but it's never really panned out. He just seems to be one of those. He lost those his hair. Just, oh. Yeah, he did lose his hair, but I mean, he just seems to be one of those who are like, for some reason, everything he does, he does really well. He's good on the mic, he's good in the ring. It's just, just doesn't quite. And there's like with something the there that some it's reason. not. Meshing, yeah, between so him and the audience. Exactly. I don't know what maybe it is. it's just because every role he's playing is sort of being played by better by other people, so to speak. When he gets starts getting a main event run, I mean, his lone wolf days was. I mean, the problem was he was basically Roman Reigns, without without the Samoa thing, and a slight bit more, you know. Yeah, it, I, just, I, I think what Cobra needs is like a better gimmick. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's fine if he if he is okay with being, you know, mid-card, mid upper mid-card. Fine. Happy happy to see him. Like I said, I think he's super underestimated or underrated. But, yeah, it's just never really big. Anyway, um, these two have broken up. They are fighting. Moss is the uh, face. Corbin's the heel. As he's always been. I don't think Corbin has ever been a face. Maybe that's what's missing. Maybe they should try to give him like a serious um, gimmick and try to turn him face for a while. Maybe. I don't know. Um, but yeah, nothing super special. But again, good, good, fun, serviceable match. Um, yeah. They, both of these guys really just need... I, I think both of these guys just really need... A solid gimmick and a solid storyline, and both of them could be really over against each other as well. I mean, remember when I when when I watched this match, all I was thinking about was remember when uh, Cesaro. Oh, there's a loss. Um, bye, Cesaro. You, I'm, I understand Tim, why you left the company. Just stay focus. <laughs> Sorry. Do you? <laughs> I'm in a hurry. Um. Do you remember when Cesaro and Sheamus had all those interminable matches? Yeah. Like, best of seven and a lot of other things. And it was like, no one cared. And then they teamed up, and the bar became, you know, mega popular. Right. I, I kind of think it's the same thing here. They just need that one thing to click, and they could be really, really good. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I just think, you know, I think Mark needs a little bit more character. Less yeah. down character. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I uh, yeah. I don't know. It's, I it's like they, some, it's like they're good, but it's like something missing. I don't know what it is. Yeah, it's like no, it's kind of like I, I, making a, a, a some kind of food, and it's like there's an ingredient here missing. I don't know what it yeah. is. But, but something, and I agree. Like I said, I think both of them are underrated. Mar uh, Corbin especially, but I don't know what to do to fix it either. So I just hope someone figures it out at one point. Well, maybe they'll figure um, it out themselves. Yeah, uh, Moss won. Yay! Yeah, perfectly serviceable map. Nothing special. Nothing big. Just yeah, it was a good match. Yeah, it? it was a fun. It, was, it was weird. It was so late in the card. I felt, but fine, whatever. Yeah. Um, Cause I would have thought was, that maybe I was still happy. It was a good match. The, I had fun. I would have thought that they would have put Charlotte and Ron yeah, in that spot. Yeah, exactly. Me too. Considering oh, that they were the uh, only. Uh, Belt that was being defended. Yeah, that was, that is something weird. That was the same thing we talked about on Mania. There's a crap ton of belts that haven't been defended on a pay per view in ages. Yeah, true. I mean the the IC title, at least the US title, is sort of being promoted because it's on Austin Theory. The IC title seems to have just fallen off the face of the planet. Who has the IC title? Um, anyway, uh, enough of that. They're a good match, fun match, not... Well, good match, maybe. Let's get on to the main bitch! Perfectly unserviceable match. 
We got main event. Main event. A six-man tag team. We have RK Bro with Randy Orton and Riddle with Drew McIntyre versus the Bloodline, the Usos, and the person who's never, ever, ever, ever going to fucking lose, Roman Reigns. Oh, I'm sorry. Brock Lesnar. Brock, Brock, Les uh, Brock Reigns. Brock Reigns. Brock Reigns. Roman yeah. Lesnar. Whatever. Um, I have. I mean, this match was really good. I really I enjoyed the match. Three. I have. I have three notes for this. Um, this was a good match. What was the point of that? I have asked this many, many times, but really, what was the point of all of this? Jesus Christ on a monocycle. Done. That's it. I could not be bothered to do more. Yeah. I, um, obviously, but well, I won. I'm just gonna say it. Uh, yeah. nat naturally. naturally. Was, I mean. Uh, uh, Roman. It, it, it could have let the other, you know, the people win. I don't think it was going to hurt Roman. Not only would it not have hurt Roman, it would have built up what they actually seem to want to do. I mean, that, on the other hand, then I heard some weird rumors they're not actually going to put Roman against Drew until SummerSlam. I heard case, some what, real what, Roman said Roman might be quit going leaving. But I don't know. That's yeah, I don't, I, I don't. I don't think know. so. They, they get. He, he wants to go to Hollywood. One thing, no one says that just because Rock could go to Hollywood, he, he can as well. Um, Rock and Cena are the only really successful Hollywood actors of this generation uh, from WWE, and both of them had some, had some star power I'm not sure Roman has. Either or. Um, but that, that be what that be. I just, I don't... I have said this so many times before, and that's, I, I, I don't even know if I can be angry at this point. What was the point of this? What does this do? This what, is... Like, I mean, is this, Drew if, gonna, to, if, why, if they were going to end this match how they would end this match, I would have rather had um, the SmackDown Championship match yeah. be the, the main event than this one. Yeah, exactly. Because I mean, was, this doesn't do anything. It it, it it uh, it doesn't set up like a a. It doesn't set it doesn't up nothing. Set up... It doesn't do anything. No. I mean, it, it, it is it's it's like okay, true loss. If Why you won, get a title run? Or it's like even yeah. if even if Bloodline lost, okay, sure, have the one of the one of the Usos get pin. Yeah. So Bruce, I'm not... have Jay have Jay eat, eat the pin. Right. Fuck it. No, no one cares. It makes the bloodline for the first time look vulnerable. Oh man, we're going into. I mean, see that bloodline loses. R Roman gets taken out by Drew and Orton like RKO's out of nowhere because it has to be out of nowhere. Jay takes the pin and like, oh shit, we're going into Hell in a Cell. Hell in a Cell and the bloodline looks vulnerable. Are they actually go? And now it's just no, 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 they're not. They are. They are the writer's pet peeves, and, you know, they cannot be allowed to show even a momentary moment of weakness because I don't know, because they have to... Back in the day, everyone said the Triple H were burying young talent. At this point, Roman Reigns and the Bloodline is burying every talent. <laughs> every talent. They're burying all the talent. Not even talent, not even in the wrestling... You hear about that singer? No, because Roman Reigns buried him. Fucking <laughs> buried him. Seriously. I mean, the last six years have been catastrophic. Brock, Goldberg, and now Roman. This, I mean, if, if WWE asked themselves in ten years, wait, where are all the where are all the stars from that generation? I'm going to say, well, they lost to fucking Roman, so you could put him against Brock for the 957th time. Um, doing it because they want to put Rock. Rusev, Braun, Tim, everyone, Tim, so no, stop it! We're not going through this shit. <laughs> no, we've done it before, but I'm, I'm, I'm getting angry at how pointless this whole title run is getting for both the Usos and Roman at this point. Yeah, it's getting old, but whatever. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Bloodline won as they should and fuck them. No. <laughs> well, okay, maybe not fuck them, but fuck it then. Uh, I mean, I'm like, I, can't, I mean, it's the writers. It's the fucking writers. Like oh, of course it is. 
<laughs> nothing. I, I, again, we say this at every pay per view. Nothing against either the Usos or Roman. I am absolutely. Aff- Unless they, we find out that Roman is basically, you give me every win or I quit, or shit like that, and Whatever, I cannot quit. imagine him doing that. Um, that that that's just not true. And if he's not doing that, then it's all like, on the. Road. I don't even know Always. what they're doing unless they're bringing in some new talent or something coming in. I don't know where I don't know where they're they're going with this. I really don't. No, I can't I can't even either. figure it out anymore. It's just like I guess he's just gonna just. I mean I don't know. Is he gonna fight God too? I don't know. Oh, uh, I, I guess he's fighting Vince, fighting God. It's a triple threat match. <laughs> fighting the devil or something? I don't know. Yeah. Oh, anyway. bloody no, man! I don't it's, know, guys, but yeah. very weird. It, it 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 was a great start, good middle, and the yeah. finish was just. Eh, yeah, yeah, it okay. was, and this could have been an awesome, awesome pay per view. Like I said. But the, the problem is, and this is the problem with doing what they're doing, and why I think they should have had the women's match probably at the very end. I told you this the other day, where it was like, it doesn't matter how good the rest of the show is if they send you home with a bad taste in, bad taste in the mouth. The rest of the show will be colored in your memory by the fact that the ending sucked. Word. And... They have just been doing that a lot recently, and this one was no. This one was just more. This one was just more. I mean, it was a, it was a really, it was really was a good match. It had a lot of yeah, really high, a had a good match. high good lot got a little highlight and everything like that. It was just yeah. I'm just tired of seeing Roman win. I've got a problem with Roman yeah. winning, but I have a problem with Roman winning. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I, I know what you mean. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, it's true. Yeah. I know what you mean. I don't have a problem with Roman winning. I have a problem with Roman winning the same match every single pay per view for yeah. the last. And years. I was like, this wasn't even for no belts. So like, just let him lose. Yeah. It's, it's fine. Like, you could have easily done that. Again, it, it's Roman fine. didn't have to eat the pin. He really have didn't. One of the get, just have one of the Usos get pinned. It's really easy. Or even better, if you don't want them to eat the pin, have the good guys beat the snot out of them with kendo sticks or something. Oh, you need to be taught a lesson. Boom, 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 boom. And the bad guys win by DQ. Something. Anything. Well, uh, oh well. That was it, guys. Oh well. Thanks so much for watching our video. Um, don't forget to watch the other um, Friend of Fire and yeah. my other video, Life is Strange, and also Tim streams tonight as well. So I think yeah. he's going to. Are you? <laughs> I am. I'm definitely going to stream tonight. Yes. Basically, as soon as this video is. Uh, basically, as soon as you've watched this video, tune into my stream uh, afterwards. I have this information and the thing. Anyways, talk to you guys later. Bye. Bye.